<laughs> the angle's really weird because I'm trying to get into the stove. But hi, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz and I thought today we would do some dip dyeing of some Wilton colors uh, to create some cool yarn. And maybe we'll see some breaking, maybe we know, won't, but we won't know until we try. So let's see um, what we can get. In this pot right here, I have seven cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I am heating it up. And so the colors that we are gonna do today are Wilton's Delphinium Blue, which has blue number one, red number three, and yellow five and six. And I know from experience um, from dying before that the Delphinium Blue breaks beautifully. I'm also going to take a look at Royal Blue, um, and Royal Blue has blue number one and red number three. I'm assuming the amount of red is really small, but presumably it would strike to the yarn first, so I don't know if we'll see a purple at one end or not, but we should get a really pretty colorway either way. And then the last color is Burgundy which has red number three, which we know binds to the yarn really, really quickly, um, yellow number six, and blue number one. So, um, oh, thank you, I love you too. Um, <laughs> so I can't wait to see what happens. I've never tried using, I don't think I've ever used royal blue on its own, um, and I uh, have never used burgundy before. So we will see what happens. Now, as I said, I've got seven cups of water in this pot, which I have brought to a boil um, with two tablespoons of vinegar. And as we go, I have some more, I guess, dye bath solution back here that has the exact same proportions of vinegar to water in case I need to increase the water level. Um, and so, you know, and if, if things don't break today, then I will try again and see, you know, what we need to do to break, but this is the system that I use with the broken violet, and so I think it should work nicely. So, oh good, you can see this on camera. So today we are dyeing 100 grams of 100% wool, wool of the Andes yarn from Knit Picks. Um, and yeah, this is yarn that I use in a lot of the videos, and I think that it should work well. Um, I think I'm inclined to start with the Delphinium Blue because I know it breaks. Um, and so in here, I have half a cup of water and I've added a half teaspoon of food coloring um, to this. And I added it a while ago and stirred it a lot to give it a good chance to dissolve. Um, I This is the same proportions that I like to use for Wilton's Violet. Um, and so I'm hoping that I can get nice deep colors and some good breaking on these yarns. Um, and I pre-soaked the yarn for 30 minutes, or actually probably a couple hours at this point, but for at least 30 minutes at room temperature. There was no vinegar or anything in the yarn, and I've squeezed out most of the water, but I didn't bother using the salad spinner because some excess water won't really hurt things. All right, so I'm going to... Um, reduce the temp and add the dye. So this is Wilton's Delphinium Blue. Actually, I'm going to increase the temp again until we start seeing a few bubbles. A little dye remained at the bottom of my cup, but there's approximately half a teaspoon of food coloring in this pot, and I think we're at about seven and a half cups of water total once I added the dye. Um, but I know, there we go, some slight disturbances on the surface, and I'm gonna lower the heat again, and let's go. It's hard, um, can hard water have an effect on the results? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, certainly salt can affect, I normally don't add salt to my dye baths, but I'm gonna get started before we see too much um, of the pink crashing out and then I'll look back at these questions. So I'm gonna start dipping and you can see that we get a nice pink 
straight away. But with the delphinium blue, yep, what I'm expecting is unlike the Wilton's violet, I think we've got a much greater proportion of blue and much less of the pinks. So you can see we are already heading into our turquoise. And so usually I know as soon as when I'm dipping, as I start to see this turquoise, that's usually around when I will add um, the yarn with Wilton's Violet. As soon as I start seeing that turquoise, I'll add all of the yarn to the pot. But given that uh, the delphinium blue has a lot more blue in it, um, I'm going a little slower. So maybe we get a tad more of a gradient with these blues. And now I am going to put the whole thing in the pot. And you can see, hopefully, yep, that we've got a nice bright blue. I hope I didn't block the camera too much when I was dipping. I'll try to like use my right hand more um, when we get to the next one. But the heat is still on. I'm at just below a boil. And I'm gonna let this sit until we can get most of the blue to absorb to the yarn. And here is, yeah, there's still a fair amount of blue in here. So I'm gonna set a timer, I think for, well, let's start with three minutes and see. I might actually increase the heat a bit. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when we're doing the blue at the end, we might need to increase the amount of vinegar. Um, I found this especially with Wilton's black food coloring that I sometimes need to increase to three tablespoons of vinegar to get all the blue to bind in the end. But yeah, because there's a lot of blue in here right now. Um, and so sometimes it just needs a little more acid to help. But let me go back and see if I have, can see any questions. Um, yay. All right, so can hard water have an effect on the results? I believe that um, where you are definitely in the water that you have definitely can have an effect. I think that there's probably some pH variability in the water and there might, um, there's also different, you know, fluoride or different salts. And so I know some people start off with distilled water um, when they do their dyeing, but I just use tap water. Um, have you thought to so soak the fiber in citric acid? Um, I, the only citric acid I've used thus far when it comes to dyeing yarn is citric acid found in Kool-Aid packets. I know that a lot of people prefer to use citric acid versus vinegar. Um, I find it easier to find vinegar, so that's why I use it more, but I do plan to do some dyeing experiments using the citric acid powder. Um, did I participate in Spinzilla? No, I didn't, and I don't really know what Spinzilla is, but I should have uh, check that out. Um, yeah, I find I have to use a lot of vinegar. Yeah, so with Wilton's Violet, um, breaking Wilton's Violet, a total of two tablespoons of vinegar and seven cups of water has been sufficient for the color to bind, but we'll see um, if I need a little more here. Um, ooh, you're getting some Wilton's in the mail today. That's awesome. Um, another question, what's the best Wilton's color to try first with breaking? Um, I would say Wilton's Violet um, because it is, uh, or actually, or even Delphinium Blue, which is the color that I'm using right now. Um, okay, we are actually starting to clear a bit. There's still a bunch of blue in the water, but it is less than there was before. Um, so it just needs like a little bit of time to absorb. Um, but I think delphinium blue might even be a little easier than violet because the there is so much more blue than there is red that you are likely to get the bright, bright blue versus, um, I guess, overshoot and end up with a pale blue. Um, I used, ah, okay, so that's been three minutes. Yeah, so I'll give it I'll give it two more minutes and then maybe I'll add some more vinegar. Because sometimes when I'm doing this, I just, you know, oh, I barely have to leave it in the pot at all at the end. But there's I think there's less blue in the violet. Um, 
So I used Wilton's Liquid Black and got beautiful red and purple skein. Um, but there's a, the green teal left in the pot. Yeah, so sometimes there's a limit to how much dye can bind to the yarn. So sometimes there's leftover color and you, the fibers are just absolutely saturated with the amount of food coloring they can take up. And so you know, that can certainly um, have an effect. Um, and you, someone else uses well water, um, so you need to use more um, vinegar, more acid to get it to absorb completely. That can certainly happen. Um, and what do I recommend for people who want to start trying to sell the yarn they dye? I don't have the best answer there because I don't really sell the yarn I dye, except for the Kickstarter campaign that I have going on right now. Um, I am promoting, I guess, a, seri a new video series called Dye Pot Weekly. And I'm currently running a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds for the dyes and yarn. And as rewards, I'm giving people yarn that I dyed in past and present dyeing videos. And so that is currently my only experience. Aha, uh -huh. look, I don't think we're gonna need to add more vinegar because the color is definitely, definitely clearing. Um, I'll just give it a couple more minutes. You'll find that as I try to keep my hair out of the pot, you'll find that a lot of dyeing is waiting. So I'm hoping that, you know, these in-between steps won't take too long um, to have you guys waiting. Um, but yeah, so it's been about five minutes and you can see that a lot of that blue has started to clear. Um, I haven't checked the pH of the water that I use at home, but I do have plans to actually more rigorously pay attention to the pH of the water that I use and the amount of the pH I get with the amount of vinegar I'm adding. Um, so then I can do some more comparisons. What's my favorite color to dye a skein with? Wilton's Violet, no question. It is my absolute favorite yarn and purple is my favorite color anyway. Um, but I just find the breaking colors so fun. I'm just grabbing a skein of yarn to show you guys as we wait. Um, but this is my favorite yarn that I've ever dyed. Um, I speckled, the video is on the channel, but I speckled um, this sock yarn using Wilton's Violet. And then all the little specks, it broke into magenta and blue. So uh, I think that Wilton's Violet is no question my favorite food coloring to dye with. Um, and my favorite yarns um, are this Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn and then also uh, the Bear Stroll. But yep, yeah, and look at that. We are clear. So I didn't set a timer again, so I'm not sure exactly how long. But now we've got to remove the skein from the pot without burning myself. Whoa, guys, check this out. There's a tiny bit of blue left in the water, but I find that that happens um, most of the time. But let's see if I can arrange this a bit. So the del delphinium blue ends up looking a lot, and the colors are kind of off, I'm sorry. They're a lot more bright on screen. I'll film a, uh, I'll, I'll film a, like I'll go live or something at the end with the dry yarn so you guys can see it. But so this is the broken delphinium blue. And I think that we've got a lot bigger blue section than we do the pink. But ultimately the shades that we've broken into are very similar to what you see with Wilton's Violet. We just have a lot more blue to work with. Um, and I don't, I might have a Wilton's Violet skein in the other room that maybe I'll pull out in the next waiting period. But I'm now gonna pump up the heat on the pot again. Actually, I'll stick this right here for now so you guys can see um, to get ready for the next color. How do I not get knotty yarn? Um, I think I'm pretty lucky. Really, you should add more ties to the yarn than I do. I just leave the two that it comes with. But I have yet to end up with a really tangled mess. 
So I continue to be a little risky. <laughs> Can you break orange? I have a video on the channel where I tried to, and I used uh, McCormick's food coloring. I mixed some McCormick's yellow and McCormick's red, and I tried to see if the orange broke. And it really looked like that we got a gorgeous gradient of tones of orange, but that the red and yellow didn't really separate. In the new Wilton's Color Perfect system, I believe they have a pink that is just red number three. So I'm excited to mix that with the yellow and see if we use just red number three versus red number 40, if we can actually see a lot more breaking. And I am gonna go ahead and add, I guess, a cup of water. Um, eh, maybe I'll add one more, because this is, so the proportion, one and a half more cups. The proportion of acid to water is still the same because I used two tablespoons of vinegar in here and I started with seven cups of water um, in the pot. So yeah, what, what color do you guys want me to do next? Do you want me to do the burgundy or should I do the royal blue? I'll let it be a viewer's choice. <laughs> All right, I see two for Burg. All right, it looks like burgundy it is. I'm not expecting to see a ton of breaking with the royal blue. I know that, I think if you hand paint with the blue, then you might um, see like some some breaking around, around the edges. But um, yeah, I'm very curious with what the, the burgundy will offer. Okay, and actually, let's do a quick, while we're waiting for that to heat up, paper towel test. Um, okay, so I just dipped this paper towel in the burgundy and the pink is really pretty, but I'm not, we'll, we'll leave this for a minute and see if we get, start seeing some changes of color around those edges. I'm gonna do the same thing in the royal blue. I should have done this in the delphinium blue, but I don't know if you can see, but the tone of the blue is kind of changing a bit. We've got like the deeper blue and then the more like this kind of teal blue towards the top. So we'll see, we could get something really cool with that. And aha, here in the burgundy towards the top, do you, can you see that little bit of blue? Um, from my paper towel chromatography. <laughs> Sorry, I'm amused. Um, let's see. So you used about three tablespoons of vinegar. Uh, you add five. Um, yeah, I because I started seeing a lot of color crashing out, I reduced to two tablespoons of vinegar. Um, if you watch some of the videos, if I have the dye stay in the pot for a while, and there's a slight ring of crashed out color around the edge, but with violet and some other colors, you start to see this film over the surface because of the, the reds just start crashing out um, a bit with the acid. So that's why I'm now trying this, get the pot hot, add the color, and then quickly start adding the yarn before the dye really has a chance to crash out. Um, yes, yeah, so someone just said that they had a hard time breaking the royal blue. Um, I'm, you know, not necessarily optimistic that it'll break as brilliantly as this, um, as the delphinium blue, but I do believe, and actually I can move my teapot and stick the delphinium blue back here so we can still see it. Um, I, I do think that you get, um, that sometimes when you're hand painting, a lot of the colors that break it becomes like a, a lot more I guess apparent there's more time for it to spread out in the fiber. Um, oh yay, someone's gonna dye in with their kit today. Um, what would it, well, so there's um, a video on the channel of me dyeing with Lucas and I gave him, I think I gave him orange, red, and purple. And that didn't start to get muddy, but we did one the other day and I think there's some pictures on Instagram where we use a lot of colors and, you know, it, we ended up with this really gorgeous fall colorway. Oh, I'll, 
I'll grab that in a minute, but first I'll start doing the burgundy. Um, and then I'll grab the, the yarn that uh, Lucas and I did uh, this week. All right. So again, even though this is a quarter teaspoon spoon in here, I did also put a half teaspoon of burgundy in here. All right, I'm gonna reduce the heat. And after I add the color, I'm gonna start dip dyeing right away. Um, so we might just end up with a gradient of pinks, but I think whatever we do, it should be really, really pretty. All right, so we are just below a boil. That was um, a half teaspoon of Wilton's Burgundy food coloring. Ooh, look how pink. Ooh, um, yeah, it was a, a half teaspoon of Wilton's Burgundy food coloring in half a cup of water. And we've got um, probably seven or eight cups of water in here. Uh, but that is a gorgeous pink. I don't know. So we're certainly seeing some, you know, less of the red as we dip. I'm going slowly because I'm nervous about, where did my tongs go? Oh, yeek, okay. <laughs> I'm, I always get nervous. Sometimes if you're doing black and you're going too fast, you can miss the blue at the end. But what? Whoa, check that out, guys. You see what's left in the pot? That's green. Um, let me show you before I, that is a, like a green, not a blue. I'm going to go ahead and add all the yarn in. There we go. We see that green. I'm not sure how well that will absorb to the yarn. I might need to increase the amount of vinegar, but that's definitely a green that's left in the pot. Wow, so I mean, there's blue and we knew that there was yellow and from our breaking orange experiment, it didn't seem like yellow really uh, bound to the fiber, but can you guys see the green? That's cool. Hopefully, hopefully it'll It'll bind, but I'll set a timer for five minutes and check on some questions while we wait. All right, I definitely am gonna wanna try speckling. Um, like I showed you that speckled dyed yarn um, a minute ago. I'm gonna wanna try doing that with the, with the food color, with, with this burgundy. All right, so someone asked um, about how many colors of Kool-Aid to use before it starts to get muddy. So we definitely, I mean, I helped a lot with this one because I was doing what I call the Lucas method. Um, I think we used green, a brown that we had mixed, purple, uh, orange, red, and yellow in here. And so we got this just actually a really fun fall colorway. So there's definitely some muddy browns, but I think that that helps with the autumn feel that we were going for. And so this yarn actually will be featured in a future Dye Pot Weekly episode, but um, I was dyeing yarn and had some dye left over and Lucas came down from nap and was like, I want to paint yarn. And so I was like, all right. <laughs> and so we, this one we did together using sponge brushes like we used in a recent video. Um, so yeah, I think that if you wanted to avoid browns and muddy browns, then maybe I would stick to um, complementary colors that, um, or I would stick, you know, maybe I would do like red, yellow, and orange and pink, or blue, green, purple, and maybe a little red. Um, but I think the more, like if you add colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel and they mix, then you'll get a brown. Um, I made the brown that I used in the other video by mixing uh, grape and orange Kool-Aids. Um, whoops, let's see. Got to backtrack so I can see these questions. 
Oh good, I'm glad so many of you are dining around with kids. It's a lot of fun. I want to get um, a bottle with like a sponge on top and maybe I'll get the one-year-old to dye some yarn because that, but we'll see. Um, have I ever tried acrylic dyes for acrylic yarn? Um, so I have not um, yet. And really when you're using acid dyes, the, the face mask is for using the, the powder and when you're mixing the powder at the beginning because it's bad to inhale any kind of powder. Um, it wouldn't be like, even with Kool-Aid, with the Kool-Aid powder, you maybe you should wear a mask when you're doing that because you don't want to inhale it. But people who are doing a lot more dyeing wear even more serious masks just because you're exposed to a lot more powders and getting particles inside your lungs um, just will cause issues. So I plan to wear a mask when I'm mixing the acid dyes, but I will probably not be wearing a mask when I'm doing the actual dyeing. Um, but I do have, I bought some liquid, one a liquid RIT dye that's supposed to work on synthetic fibers, and I will be trying that at some point. Oh, okay, we're basically clear um, three and a half minutes in. I will um, just want to see here. There's a few more questions. Um, Ooh, I should try rose petal pink. Um, yeah, I'm excited to try lots and lots of colors. All right. So, ooh. So with it, when all the color absorbed, we ended up with like a dusty rose at one end and magenta at the other. So I'm not sure if you would call this broken or a gradient because even though I would say that we have a, like, you know, this is not as electric pink as that one is, but it's a paler pink. Um, I am excited to look at this with speckling because with the paper towel, we do see, I guess, a bit of a green and blue kind of towards the edge. So yeah, I think that maybe if there's no pink left in the water, I'm curious to see what we would see. But this is still a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. So I am really excited by that. And I'll note that very, we've had very little red crashing out so far. So I think that this new technique of adding, adding the color and then immediately starting to dye the yarn is working really nicely. So if you're just joining in, we're dip dyeing yarn into different colors of Wilton's Violet food coloring. And we started by, with doing Delphinium Blue and we just finished with Wilton's Burgundy. And coming up, we're gonna do Royal Blue, which has red number three and blue number one in it. Um, and so these are some of the colors that we see in Wilton's Violet and some other things. So um, maybe we'll see, you know, a little bit of purple at one end and then some blue, or we'll get a really pretty blue gradient if there's really just a tiny amount of red. Um, do you think the leftover in the blue in the pot affected the results? Um, there's a chance. Um, there's a chance that, that had something to do with it, but we know that there is there are at least trace amounts of blue in with the burgundy. Um, but ultimately, the amount of blue left in the pot is so small compared with the whole half teaspoon of food coloring that we added that I think that I don't think that we would be able to really proceed. Um, much of a difference. Um, but it is certainly, it's possible. Um, and so what's left in the pot right now is extremely clear with a slight blue edge. The pot is starting to look a little purple and that's mainly because some dye has crashed out around the edges. And I actually might take um, it's pretty hot, but I might take a paper towel just to show you and my handy dandy tongs. Do, do, do. Create kind of like a sponge. And then maybe I'll add some more water again, but just to remove. Yeah, 
But it's funny that how pink the pot is looking right now, but the actual water itself doesn't really appear pink. But so you can see the this, but the paper towel is really pink because of the dye particles that had crashed out of solution um, because of the acidity. And ooh, that's hot. Um, but if we just dip a paper towel into the pot right now, um, there's basically like no color on it. Um, and so this is when we dipped a paper towel into the delphinium blue. And so we can definitely, or not delphinium blue, I'm sorry, into the royal blue. And so that definitely broke here. So with any luck, we will also see that in the pot. Okay. Whew. Oh, I need to make some space for the yarn. I had pre-wrung out the yarn for the first two colors. Uh, do, do, do. Getting a good handle on my skein. So I'm wearing gloves just so that way I don't dye myself. Um, oh gosh, that sounds, that, so that way I don't dye my skin. I myself will not die from any of these experiments. Um, so, all right. We've got our 100 grams of 100% wool yarn ready to go and uh, bring my tongs back within reach, reduce the temperature, um, got to run to work. Yeah, the, the replay will be up as soon as I'm done filming, um, which causes less felting of, so I think I've only done like, I've only dyed like a tiny hand spun mini skein of Corndale before. Um, so I think that, I mean, I have been really lucky to not experience a lot of felting of fiber. I have a roving came coming up that did have some felting around the edges a tiny bit, but it's still very spinnable. So um, I got pretty lucky, but I think that steaming the fiber in either the microwave or a steamer basket provides less agitation. And so, um, you know, the more, if you're dyeing fiber in a pot and you let it cool completely in the pot, you will um, agitate the fibers less. But I found, you know, you, you see how much I'm moving here and these yarns are, you know, not felted at all and are totally knittable. Um, so, yes, all right. We've got our royal blue, which I'm not sure how, and again, we've got, the equivalent in the pot right now of about seven cups of water to two t and two tablespoons of vinegar. Um, I've been adding some water from here, which had that same proportion. Um, I guess it might be slightly diluted now because we, there's no vinegar in these dye mixes. But this had half a teaspoon of royal blue and in half a cup of water. So now I'm going to add this to the pot. Stir it up. See that we're nice and hot and I've got the heat on low while I'm doing this because you want, I like to try to keep things just below a boil. Let's dip in and okay, immediately we can see that this is very, very blue. Um, and whoa, yeah, I think there's not very much red in because the so I can see that there is some red um, in that first blue, but we are already at that bright teal dipping in that I usually wait for. Um, with Wilton's Violet, I wait until I start hitting that teal before I add everything in uh, to the pot. Um, I did see along the bottom some red in there. But I think that, oh gosh, yeah. If you look, there's definitely some purple at the bottom. I don't know how well that's reading to you. Um, I might need to take some pictures to show you guys. But I think that this is gonna be a stunning colorway, but we'll be able to debate whether the colors are broken or if we have a gradient. Um, but, Okay, and there's a lot of color in here. I might need to add more vinegar um, for this one because I know 
when I break black in order to get all the blue to bind I need to increase it to let's just put this tip in and see yeah I'll just go ahead and leave this in now um, when I'm breaking black Wilton's black food coloring I need to add um, an extra tablespoon of vinegar at the end to get the blue to bind but we'll see because I, I forget Yeah, so it's blue number one. Um, do I? No, I don't have black over here to remind myself what's there. But I'll just show you. Um, we have that bright, bright blue, and I think there's even more of it than when we were at this point with the delphinium blue. But you know, I think that what we saw in this paper towel um, is pretty accurate for what happened. Can you see the pink in there? Um, there's a bit of pink down there. And so I think that the way that that translates into the yarn is that we've got um, the teal at one end, this or this bright, I guess, it's similar to the neon blue that you get in McCormick's, and then a deeper, more, I guess, hot royal blue at the end, the other end. But we'll see how purpley it looks um, as we get through. Blues are my favorite. Um, do I have anything made with the yarns you've broken a color? Something that we can see? Yeah. Um, let, well, let me see if I can find it. Um, have I tried jar dyeing fiber before? Um, yes. Um, well, so I've put, um, uh, what's the name of the canning? I've put some of the, the can, the mason jars. I've dyed yarn in some mason jars in a pot, and I should have put something at the bottom of the pot because it sounded very, like, clingy. Um, I'm going to look for my hat that I dyed with the broken violet. And, okay, apparently it's not downstairs. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't show that to you right now. Um, if I could have found it quickly, I would have grabbed it. But I do think I have some dry broken violet. Yeah. Uh -uh. So here is a dry skein of some of the yarn that I dip dyed into Wilton's Violet. Um, and you can see that we've got this bright blue. Um, that one almost looks a little more green. Um, and then a pink at one end. And so the colors will change as they dry, but the purple in the delphinium, delphinium blue is definitely more muted. Um, it's not as electric as this pink. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, but it's, and even the burgundy, um, it's like a different hue. Um, so there's, I mean, there's definitely blue because since the way that I dip dye it, there's blue all over this. And so that, I guess, shifts the tone from, I guess, from that shade of pink to this more pink purple. But so this was from Broken Violet. And at some point I will kind of lay all the, these four stains out together. So that way you can, uh, you can see. Um, yeah, these gradients are so much fun. Um, yes, I am a big purple and blue fan. Um, that should be <laughs> pretty apparent from the colors I usually pick. But, um, yeah, so, oh, there's still a lot of blue in there. But I don't know if you guys can see the purple in there. Um, it's, I can tell it's there because of the, like, I don't know, I maybe from my experience with the, a lot of the Wilton's Violet, just seeing the way how when you really get the concentrated red number three, sometimes it almost feels like it has a glow to it. Um, it's harder to like show that on camera, but um, I've also found that different fibers kind of take up the dye a bit differently. Uh, the sock yarn that I use a lot that has 75% superwash, um, wool and then 25% nylon takes up dye like that. Like 
you know, you add something, you can add cool dye on top of it and it just kind of sticks and stays. So I am, I'm, I ordered some super wash uh, of this wool and I'm curious to do some side-by-side -side comparisons and see what, um, how differently, oh, sorry, there's my dog, um, how differently the dyes absorb. Um, let's check, okay, the timer's about to go off. And we still have a lot of blue in here. Um, I am going to increase the heat because um, it took took a little bit for it to absorb with the delphinium blue, but there's a lot more blue here this time. Um, and so ooh, I hope that the color absorbs and we get something this bright. This is, I have a feeling I'm gonna have a lot of fun with royal blue in the future. I definitely want to speckle yarn with all these colors to see like in a really small area how they break. Very similarly to this yarn that I did with the Wilton's Violet that I showed earlier. But in case you're tuning in, you can see that even by adding like just a tiny amount of dye to fiber, you can get it to break and get something really beautiful. I'm like, keep addressing the heat because I want to stay just below a boil. Um, and now let me check and see if I've got any new questions. Um, good afternoon from the UK. Um, yeah, I think that adding like a tiny bit of red to blues is a lot of fun. Um, ooh, in Spain. You guys are from all over the place. I am in Massachusetts and let me go see if I can help the dog. Sorry, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, there's a UPS truck. successfully calm him down very much but <laughs> sorry about that um, okay we're, the color is slowly I would say slowly clearing a bit but man you know I oh Argentina too um, have I ever tried a technique called glazing I have not I would like to uh, look into that um, and see how people have done it. I've seen some glazed looking yarns and it's gorgeous, but I haven't tried playing with it. But yeah, I'm excited to play with a lot of different techniques for you guys. I have a lot of really, really exciting projects coming up with Die Cut Weekly. Um, I, and it's projects that I've been saving for some of the videos. And I know some of you guys are sponsors of future Die Cut Weekly episodes. So thank you so much for your support. Um, of my Kickstarter campaign, but I am going to, um, oh, I am not plugged in. Ha! Huh. Better plug in the phone so it doesn't lose charge. Um, I have so many things I'm really excited to show you. Like I have food coloring sprays. Like, can you imagine spraying yarn with Wilton's Violet food coloring? Um, I have Oh, the, I haven't ever used the Wilton's Color Right, um, Color Perfect liquid system. I'm excited to play with that. And then I'm about to put in some orders for some acid dyes. I think I'm going with Jacquard and a couple of um, Dharma acid dye colors that I, um, I know from other people who have told me that those colors specifically break. So I'm really excited to look at breaking um, and breaking colors from... Uh, many, many different yards. Hello, Sweden and Vietnam. Wow. And near Niagara Falls. You guys are from all over. Um, I do have one more skein of yarn soaked. So maybe we could do one more color. Um, ooh. Maybe I should try some brown. What do you think? Okay, we slowly but surely 
the dye is going in. But would you guys like to see me try to do some Wilton's Brown? Uh, where's my... Hmm. Oh, I think I put the other measuring cup in the same separate one. I can mix them up. Oh, did I use? Now I'm curious how much water I actually use. I'm pretty sure I used half a cup. Brown is a good stable color. Um, all right, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this off camera because I don't really have space to show you. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm inclined to just let this keep going. Uh -uh. Normally, this is the part in my videos that I just completely cut out um, because there's a lot of waiting and, oh, I should just get new gloves because those ones are sweaty. Uh, Everything's okay, except I have no idea where I put my box of gloves. Um, because <laughs> uh, I had two on the counter, and then I feel like I should sing and dance. I feel bad that you guys are just watching a pot not boil. Aha! With two young kids, things get frequently moved around. And, yeah, then I can't find things, because we're, my dying kitchen is also my kitchen kitchen, so we do a lot in here. Oh, I love this color. I mean, I'm a purple girl, but this blue is beautiful. Um, ooh, Wilton's Copper. I haven't, yeah, I definitely haven't attempted that one before. Uh, so this Wilton's Brown that I'm going to use today is really old. Like, really old. Um, but I am going to do, since all of my half teaspoons are dirty, uh, I used a portion of a two-thirds teaspoon so I would say we're at approximately half a teaspoon of food coloring in here, but not uh, exactly. But yeah, I just, you know, attempted to fill this uh, most of the way full. Do you have a place that you like to order Wilton's dye from in the USA? Um, I mostly find it in big box craft stores. So I find it at... Uh, Joann's and Michael's and AC Moore. Um, I know that some people can find it at um, Walmart. There isn't one near me, so that's not a place where I really shop. Um, Target might have some. I haven't checked their like cake decorating section. Um, most supermarkets don't have it. I've ordered it from Amazon in the past, but it's a bit more expensive uh, because I think that it's been marked up, but you can certainly order. See, look. We're getting closer and closer. You can certainly order it from like Joann's online or something like that. Uh, you got, you tried uh, Wilton's Copper and got a nice orange with spots of pink. Ooh, all right, I'm gonna need to try that. Um, yeah, and Amazon will have most of the colors, but I think that they, you can usually find them for under 250 or sometimes even under $2 uh, many places um, per bottle. Um, I wish they had dates on them, but I mean this, I've had this since I started filming dyeing videos. Ooh, and I've got it all over my fingers. See, that's why I wear gloves. Apparently there's a special soap that you can get, and I found this on like the Dharma, um, they like sell their dye distributor. And I'm like, ooh, I need that because I'm always dyeing my hands. Um, okay, so the, the Wilton's Brown, at least this old version, has yellow number six, yellow number five, red 40, and blue number one. And so I know that, I have no idea if this is the current brown formulation. Um, I know that my delphinium blue is also many, many years old. 
the burgundy and royal blue are newer. Uh, but I know that at some point between when I started dyeing and today, they changed the formulation of the Wilton's black. Okay, I think that this is probably most of what we're gonna get. I guess I'll let the timer stop. So it'll have been 15 minutes in the pot to exhaust the dye. Um, oh, and Alaska, Amazon is way cheaper. Yeah, I think depending on, I guess, shipping prices and stuff, it can uh, be cheaper. But I know, and I always feel badly because I know a lot of people over in Europe and sometimes Canada can't get uh, Kool-Aid. And so I always feel bad. But you can achieve, there's a website, um, uh, it's one of the top results when you look up dyeing yarn with food coloring. And they have a lot of like, they show a lot of different brands of food coloring, so you can get kind of the equivalent of different Kool-Aid flavors. You know, like what color of Wilton's is approximately the same. But uh, yeah, I always feel bad when um, people can't get, um, don't have easy access to the colors. Um, and I used to buy blue and green Kool-Aid packets from eBay because I couldn't find them locally. But one of my local stores has every color. All right, so check out the Royal Blue. And wow, this is beautiful, you guys. Um, let me pull up the end that we started with. And so I'm not sure if it's reading on camera, but there's definitely a pink tinge to this blue. I would call it almost like a very, very deep blue, blue, blue purple. But this yarn is stunning. Yeah, I think on camera, you can't really get the, the, the pink isn't really reading through. So I'll try to photograph that um, to share some pictures. But I will definitely share the finished yarns in the end with what we get. Um, so we're going to do brown in just a second. And there is residual blue in the pot. And I'm adding and bringing up the, the volume of water. But I believe that this blue, the small amount of blue that remains after all the other dye has exhausted, will have a minimal effect um, to what we're dyeing. Um, yeah, so if I dip the paper towel in, the only spot of color comes from some of the brown <laughs> that's still in my hand from when I mixed it. Um, the 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 color is absolutely minimal and um, when I do many different skeins of Wilton's Violet in a row um, this is kind of what the water looks like in between um, yeah yeah blue purples are so hard to do on camera even when I'm messing with the white balance I find it really hard to photograph it in a way that it reads um, naturally um, with the way it shows but this like I mean, this blue right here is almost glowing. It is so, and you know, before I was like, ooh, this is like a nice bright teal. Um, but it definitely is more green than what I get with the Wilton's Violet. And the purple even is much more muted. But this, whoo, this is a nice, nice color. Um, sometimes I'll use a quarter teaspoon of the Wilton's food coloring, but I find using a half teaspoon really gives you these deeper, sat more saturated colors. Um, oh, I want to now increase the heat um, to get us to about a boil and then take it back down. But I think I'd already dipped this, but if you compare um, to what we started with, there is basically no color, even though we're seeing the blue. Um, I mean, I know that if I were to just put bare yarn in here, we would get a very pale blue, but over, even over dyeing that with, um, over dyeing that with this brown that we're about to do, um, yeah, we'll get like a deep color, but actually let's do it while we're waiting for things to heat up. Let me grab another little piece of paper towel so we can do our paper towel chromatography and see what we might expect from the brown. 
So in about a minute, you know, maybe we'll see if this breaks into anything. And let me check for Oh yeah, socks with that would be really, really nice. Um, okay, so around the top, you can start to see uh, a little, slight amount of blue, maybe. I'll just put this down for a second. Um, Anyway, these, I'm, I'm really excited with these colors. I wish that uh, some of these purples read better on camera. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, and I don't know if I'll just film it live or not when we, uh, when, when I come back to show you guys these yarns. But oh, I can talk about how I wash them. So we, um, I'll wait for them to cool completely. And that's kind of why I set them in these bowls because that, helps and the delphinium blue would be ready ready to wash um, but I will just with cool water with some I use I use just like this Dawn dish soap there's special soaps that people use for dyeing yarn that are um, pH neutral but again I'm trying to use things that are mostly accessible to everyone and so then I'll rinse it and sometimes some color will bleed out um, when you're washing it and so I'll keep rinsing it until the water runs clear and then I'll hang it up to dry. But thanks to one of you guys, I now use a salad spinner to remove a lot of the excess liquids and that helps things dry a lot quicker. Um, so, yeah, I am really, really excited. Um, really excited to see what happens with this brown because I don't think I've dyed yarn with the brown by itself and aha, here we go. You do see, oh, I don't think it's reading on camera. So there's almost like a greenish tinge at the end, very similar uh, to what we saw with the burgundy, I think. So there is a potential for breaking. Um, we might end up seeing more of a gradient than a true break of color, which I mean, with the dip dyeing, when we're breaking, we're really just having the reds bind right away and then um, bringing it into something else. But I think that with all of these colors, we could get something really cool looking if we do the speckled yarn. And I can tell you for a fact that that'll be something else um, that will show up in one of the, uh, probably one of the sponsored videos of Dye Pot Weekly. Um, that campaign, the Kickstarter campaign ends in, I think, eight days. And then on the 18th of October, after it ends around 8 p.m. Eastern time, I will release the first video of Dye Pot Weekly. And it's a really, really exciting dyeing experiment and I cannot wait to show you guys. Um, all right, this, um, we are dyeing yarn today using food coloring, but it does, you can actually dye spaghetti um, with food coloring and then make like spooky like brains and stuff for Halloween. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce the temperature and it, so we have a ha about approximately half a teaspoon of brown food coloring in half a cup of water and I started out in the proportion of acid that I'm using in. Oh no, I forgot to squeeze out the water from the skein. Um, I'll do that quickly. Um, the proportion of acid is we started off with seven cups of water and added two tablespoons of vinegar. And so when I've been refilling the pot, I have been using water um, that has that, that same uh, concentration of acid. So, all right. And this is the Wilton's Brown, which, yeah, I can't believe I've never died with it on its own. It's kind of... I mean, I know someone mentioned using copper, but this actually looks 
pretty copperish um, right now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting this to come out with something that's a lot more like the burgundy. Because um, you can already see the tone of the color is already getting um, certainly paler as we go towards the top. Um, maybe you could tell that there's a bit more red in the bottom, but I think that given that the overall tone changes, that's pretty subjective. And so we are going, now it's kind of, well, yeah, we're starting to almost get to the, the greenish phase, like we saw with the pink. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add all of the yarn to the pot and yeah, we'll see. I'll start off with five minutes, but we'll see what color we get. But given that we know that there's colors in the brown that will break, and yep, we're at that, it's more brown than we got with the burgundy, but we're definitely at kind of a green versus a blue right now. Um, I think that looking at these on smaller and smaller scale versus dip dyeing an entire skein, we could get something really cool. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but these colors are really exciting. And how long have we been going? Um, oh, we're about an hour in. Um, that's not so bad actually for almost being done with four skeins of yarn. How many yards is this yarn and what is the yarn? Aha! So the yarn that I'm using today is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Bare Worsted Weight Yarn. Um, it's 100 grams and there's 220 yards per skein. Here's the, I'm not sure if we're in focus or not, but here's the information. And I'll put up a link to the yarn, um, potentially an affiliate, I'll put up a link to the yarn at the end. Yeah, the color, actually, you're, you're right, this does look like when I tried dyeing with Coke Zero. And I think this is the color that many people were hoping that we would get when we were dyeing yarn with the caramel color. But now, okay, we are now definitely, most of the brown has added and we are at a green um, right now. I'm gonna reduce the temperature so we don't get too many bubbles. Um, it's possible, maybe one of these times I should have some mini skeins handy to add at the end to see what we get. But the given that you can see so much of the measuring cup, there is so little dye left at this point that, um, you wouldn't get necessarily get a really dark color out of that, which is why I went ahead and added all of the yarn. But with, when we did the burgundy, we got these nice kind of muddy sections. And so that's the closest to breaking that we saw is that this pink at the end went from, you know, a hot pink magenta to a dusty rose color. And so that's pretty fun, right? Uh, and am I using fingering weight yarn or worsted? I am using fingering, or sorry, I'm using worsted weight yarn. Um, uh, but yeah, I, it's, uh, this, this is a yarn that I use for, oh gosh, many, many projects. Um, it's one of my, oh, I, I think that the worsted weight Will of the Andes yarn is actually one of the things that brought me to knit picks originally. Oh no, I think it was a shine worsted because I knit a Sheldon turtle. But I, yeah, it's one of my favorite. Ooh, we're starting to really clear. Um, yeah, it was, it's one of my go-to, uh, my go-to yarns. Um, I really like the Stroll Fingering Bear Yarn at Knit Picks. It dyes beautifully. And since it's super washed, there's not the filting risks. I used to use the Fingering Weight Palette Bear Yarn, which is the non-super wash, two-ply um, fingering weight. But that doesn't really felt really because you can separate it and knit with it, but they get, the fibers get more sticky. To each other not like sticky when you touch it but it's 
uh, like the skeins don't look as pretty in the end. Um, you should totally get some royal blue. So the, your fingering weight yarn seemed to stretch out thinner after dyeing it. Um, what was the fiber content of the yarn? I mean, you certainly can, uh, oh, I should reduce this a bit more. Um, you certainly can see, uh, sometimes with the way that you dry it, you can stretch the yarns just like you might with, um, if you're going to block something when you stretch it out. Um, I try to remove as much of the water as I can before I hang it up and the textures can definitely change. When I do the like wool and acrylic blends and kind of boil them, you can s like comparing that to the original yarn, there is something that looks different. Um, um, just tuned in. All right. So currently this is Wilton's Brown ah, and we're five minutes into leaving everything in. All right, and the water is basically clear. Uh, five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that, um, whoop, turn off this burner and kind of review. So we started with dip dyeing uh, Wilton's Delphinium Blue, which broke into kind of a like almost a dusty purple and this really pretty teal. Next, we looked at Wilton's Burgundy which did have some green in it that was left over. So we've got like a magenta and then this dusty pink, but I'll let you guys debate whether or not it actually broke or <laughs> if we just ended up with a uh, gradient of pink. But there were definitely like different colors bound at different rates. It's just the overall, um, yeah, it was just the overall colors um, are cool. And then this oh, was the royal blue. And it's hard to read on camera because this is definitely like a deep royal blue right here. But you can, in person, you can see that there's a tinge of pink in there that is not present, you know, at the other end. So I think that we've got more than just a gradient of tone where you can actually see some of the breaking here. And I'm really excited to play with this royal blue more in the future. But unfortunately, on camera, you just kind of see the blue, you, the the pink tones aren't really reading. And here we just finished up our Wilton's Brown, which also kind of finished off with a green tone, um, very similar to the burgundy. But I think that, uh, I'm not sure if it broke, or again, if we have more of a gradient. This is kind of similar to back when I did the breaking orange experiment. And let's see, uh, it's pretty hot, so I don't wanna set this up there. Let's make some space right there for it. Um, so certainly we have these tones, and this is like, as someone pointed out, this is kind of the color I think people were hoping for when they were asking me to dye yarn with Coca-Cola. Uh, but, you know, we have, I mean, I would say very qualitatively that we go from more of like a brown to almost a copper orange over here. But again, is it broken? It's nothing like the delphinium blue or the, um, it's nothing like the delphinium blue or the Wilton's violet that we've done in the past. Um, I see to do red. I will, I will do this again. I think that this worked out pretty well doing the successive dip dyings in one pot. I think what I also showed today is that you really only need to add acid once and then you can keep reusing the same dye bath. And you might end up with some residual colors, but looking at this, this is not very blue and there was some blue left behind. Um, I think that the amount of dye left behind at the end is so small. Maybe next time I will actually, once we remove say royal blue, I'll add a whole other skein of yarn so we can see just how much color is left. And so obviously this one's dry, so it's a little different, but here is the yarn that we dyed with half a teaspoon of Wilton's Violet. And in all these colors, I used half a teaspoon of the dye in half a cup of water and then added it to the pot right when we were about to boil. How do you make the wool softer after dyeing? Um, I find that the wool is still really soft um, when we're done. But some people I think sometimes might add a little um, lanolin back in. 
Uh, or some people actually use hair conditioner on yarn. Um, I once had a yarn that someone gave me that was so scratchy. And so I tried using hair conditioner on it and leaving that in and it helped a, a bit. Um, but I usually, after you see me wash it on the video, that's usually where I stop. Um, but I will, I think in a couple days, once all these dry, I will come back live um, to do a comparison of all these colors. But you can always submit, and I won't be able to see the comments, these live comments after the video ends because they don't get saved. But comment on the, um, on the playback if there's a particular color you'd like to see me try. Um, and so then, uh, yeah, I think that that can, uh, that could, yeah, I think I might do this again because it was a lot of fun. And I'd even be happy to do live some repeat colors. But yeah, seriously, I'll take requests and pick up some other colors of Wilton's icing colors. Or even, you know, maybe we'll try this with some acid dyes at some point in the future. The new dye pot for Dye Pot Weekly will uh, debut once I start filming the sponsored videos um, because I now have a pot that I can use with non food safe dyes. And so I'm excited. Um, black. Yes, there's some breaking black on the channel, but I would be happy to do that live sometime in the future. Um, but the technique that I was doing here, although I think in the breaking black video, I used three separate pots to really keep things separate. Um, but yeah, I've done breaking black and Wilton's violet in the same pot. Although with the breaking black, I have to increase the, the vinegar, um, the vinegar percentage. Someone uses soak for hand washing knitwear. Um, yeah. And as I learn with new soaps and, and stuff, uh, I, I will, you know, I'll share the, the things that I buy and the things that I'm using. Um, and so, yeah, so Marie with the 80-20 yarn, I'm not sure why necessarily it's stretched out. Sometimes the look is different, but I've whenever I've knit things up, it's always felt, well, especially with the wool of the Andes, it feels very similar to me as some other yarns. Um, and then uh, someone says that she uses soak for hand-washing knitwear. But, yeah, so... Um, thank you so much for joining me as I dip dyed yarn in different colors of Wilton's Violet Live. Um, once again, we did Delphinium Blue, Royal Blue, Burgundy, and Brown. And so if you missed part, you can catch it on the replay. And I will um, try to add in the description at some point the times that the various colors start so you can skip right to the one that you want to see. Um, if you want to support the Chemnitz Tutorials channel, please check out the Dye Pot Weekly Kickstarter campaign. It's running for eight more days and there's still sponsorship slots and your contributions will help fund the dyes and yarn that I use in exciting videos like this. And I'm really excited to start publishing videos at a more regular weight or regular rate. And I really cannot wait to start sharing with you some of the exciting things I have planned for the first 35 episodes of Dive Hot Weekly. Thank you so much for joining me today. And yeah, don't feel free to leave any questions on the, on the playback because uh, the live stream comments disappear and then I won't be able to see them again after. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Bye everyone.